We are already at lunch time, but I think after these two great um, presentations, I think it is uh, good for us to have a little bit of time also for some questions. So I would like to open the, the debate and uh, invite you to um, go on with your uh, questions, your remarks, whatever. Who would like to start? <laughs> As you know, to break the ice. Always breaking the ice, frankly. Uh, thank you to all um, yeah. presentations. Uh, Carlos Tewana, I didn't know, but uh, I, I heard several presentations from Sophie Psy in other situations. Always uh, the best. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, only one thing, personal thing that uh, your presentation bring to me, uh, the parliament. It's one of the few examples, very rare examples, when uh, uh, art, the artist disseminates throughout all the, throughout all the population. One example is uh, 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 L. L as we know now, was invented by Alighieri Dante, when uh, at least uh, every Christian people uh, uh, talking about the, uh, hell is thinking about what uh, Dante wrote in, the, in, the, in his comedy. And uh, in the example of the parliament, it's the word left and right. Left and right, everyone knows in the world was invented by an architect, by his name Giuseppe, a known architect for all, <laughs> many of us. But well, the, this is a, uh, and the artist created uh, something that uh, everyone knows. When we say left and we say right, we are thinking of Giuseppe. So <laughs> it's uh, uh, really amazing. Uh, because uh, I don't know you know you know the story, but uh, simple. No? You say so as to build the Assemblée Nationale, uh, substituting the old courts of the Ancien Régime, and uh, he had a problem to solve. Before left and right, there was front and back. The front was the nobleman and the clergyman, and the people when. Uh, was represented, was in the back. And in the French Revolution, they didn't want to be on the back. So you said, so have to, so that's some way. And well, one, some of the left and some of the right. Well, uh, and that remained. It was an architect. Yes, it was an architect that made that thing. Someone more? Thank you, Franklin. So, um, so to make the remark, you listen to me. Another remark, this one to Carlos. Um, I am um, a great admirer of um, Galician ar contemporary architecture. And of course, you, your work. Uh, it was very well explained, the meaning of the red carpet in the public space, the drawing of the floor, like uh, our teacher, Nuno Portas, in Porto, liked to <laughs> teach us the design of, of, of the ground, the design of the... But uh, the question is, if you think that uh, this kind of analogy with the red carpet and the ground floor of the public space could be also applied in the design of uh, 3D models, and not not uh, if the red carpet can be seen also not as two 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 dimensions, but in three dimensions. If you can comment a little bit on that. Well, <clears throat> yeah. uh, it so good question. I never thought about that, but <laughs> I think the concept of red carpet uh, doesn't have to be literal. No, it can be a lesson more than 
literal, no? And in that sense, I think a red carpet is something <clears throat> that defines a space without cutting it, no? Without making a physical destroyer, no? And that is a important lesson for architecture where we have to be sustainable, no? Um, that sense is even we saw today unfolding and unfolding type of structures. No? Is a thing could be conceptually the same, but without being literal. And in that sense, it could be obviously three dimensional because the quality of the carpet <coughs> is in the quality of the fabric. Mm -hmm. In quality of the fabric more than the carpet itself. Mm -hmm. Then that three dimensional fabric uh, can be understood in a lot of different contemporary architectures, I think. And that is uh, something that has to be underlined or reinforced, but can be possible, sure. At, at least I believe in that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, it's more of a comment. I was aghast, especially by Sofia's presentation. Um, I am deeply interested like in uh, formal methods apply like to the to the human scale, like really interior spaces and I think uh, the work really shows how there are so many layers like of analysis and and especially the uh, the need of social interpretation of the values because I think I have like really bumped into it that uh, uh, I haven't found so many like means of interpreting this for a moment so I Congratulations, that's very good. <laughs> Thank you. The fundamental principle of space syntax is that uh, there is lo a social logic in space and yeah. spatial logic in society. It's not just a spatial network. Sometimes we discuss them from the point of view of spatial networks, but we've got to understand that these spatial networks capture something about the process by which they were built, which were social. Uh, and the tectonic dimension of architecture and landscapes are about a whole culture, about history, about the geomorphology of, of, of places, and the culture of the builders, the, where the materials come from, who brings them, their system of payment, the system of labor, everything about these systems is social. <laughs> Thank you. More? Um, thank you for these two amazing presentations. I believe we all learned a lot, and I was trying to keep notes and make photographs to repeat this at home because it was very dense. Um, the first presentation was deeply poetic and uh, very respectful to the environment, and it was a very great lesson for us, young architects, how to think how to design and how to respect places. And uh, I'm very much also interested in language and the words you used, because you said that the red carpet defines a place without cutting it. Uh, you used the word cut, and then you spoke about templum that comes from the word cut. So without cutting, you're cutting, which I found <laughs> really, really interesting, because I was Googling now templum to see uh, the, the etymological thing uh, and the Latin word and the Greek temenos, which relates to, to me, the section and the cutting off. And then going from templum into religious space, I was thinking of the churches and I was thinking of Sophia's analysis of the churches. Uh, also, congratulations, it was a really magnificent lecture and I also learned a lot and the way you analyze and you categorize things is uh, it, it will stay in my mind forever, so it's, it's, a, it's a way to remember things. Yeah. So going from the templum to the actual temples that you showed us in Venice, again, this um, concept of cutting. So mm -hmm. cut, the temple is a cutting line between uh, the um, sacred people, the mm -hmm. priests. Um, civilians cannot go behind, only the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the priests can go there. And it's a cutting line. And at the same time, uh, we have the eyes of this situation that is a connecting line. So this concept of cutting and connecting was really, really present in both uh, 
lectures, and this I find fascinating, because then we have these lines that are connecting through vision, isovist, and then again we have the the surfaces that cut, mm -hmm. like the Barcelona Pavilion, etc. Yeah. But at the same time they cut, then they have the reflection that it again connects. Mm -hmm. So this cutting and connecting was all over the narrative, and uh, I think it was very fortunate event that these two keynotes were together. And thank you really much about this. I mean, I don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just want I just wanted to say thank you. It was amazing. <laughs> well. Yeah, I think the magic of the of the carpet is that it's a construction, a mind construction. No, it's a, it's a, the carpet in, in a way. Some people refer to it also like a window, like a window that you look at and you travel to other space, to the paradise or to to the place of God. No, at the end, it's some mental construction, some mental construction the architecture can make. No, that physically, when you have objects and can got the illusion to travel other time to other place. But the carpet is, for me, is the most sophisticated one because it's totally folded and unfolded. <coughs> it's, it's, it's dimensional, but makes something totally mental. <coughs> no? uh, that is a lesson for the future, uh, I think. It comes from the past, but I think it's a lesson for sustainability and for future architecture. Not even for me, but maybe for you. <laughs> I share that. <laughs> and uh, perhaps I would say that it is the, uh, the architect's resistance to the constraints. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. So if uh, a, a, a plane divides, the architect mis resists that division and tries mm -hmm. to overcome it. And this is the constant strive for the architect to overcome the constraints that the mm -hmm. materials or the occlusion uh, in spaces or gravity or lots of other things impose in their work and in their imagination. That's how innovation, I believe, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. um, uh, is constructed by that resistance to the um, constraints in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in space and form. So thank you for summarizing the two lectures. <laughs> <laughs> More? Or lunch? No more? Well, I would like to thank you and to thank you for the lovely um, uh, keynote uh, presentations. Uh, it was very good to close this final day of the symposium with both of your uh, presentations. Uh, I would just uh, like to highlight the relevance of research to open new perspectives on things that we already, that we thought that we already know everything about it. So, it's um, it's a very, 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 very good um, uh, starting point or restarting point that I um, uh, will have in mind, as you said, from your uh, presentation, and from your presentation, the um, what I would have in mind is this relation between the topos, as you said, the place, the topology, more than the topology, the, 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 the relevance of the place the, 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 and, the, and the importance that the place has to what we are going to add or to do to that place. That place already is something and we need to know what is some, what that something is in order to, to know what to do that. So, so I would like to uh, highlight this this complementary perspective of, of what we can see um, um, forward regarding uh, uh, or from the research uh, uh, starting point or restarting point or from this embodied experience of the, the topology, the top of the place. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. And now um, lunchtime because we are already late for the yeah. first session in the afternoon.